Hello and welcome. Uh, today is Saturday, August 29th. Let us begin our daily devotions by calling on the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer of the day. Gracious Father, on this day of preparation for the celebration of the resurrection of Christ, grant us faith in the words that he spoke, proclaiming his own victory over the grave. Grant us peaceful hearts as we reflect upon his sacrifice and prepare to celebrate his victory tomorrow. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson for the day is taken from 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. I am acting with great boldness toward you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. In all our affliction, I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest. But we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without, without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Here ends our reading for the day. Since the previous letter to the Corinthians, Titus was sent to the church in Corinth and found that they had repented of their wrongs and their problems were now abating. In this passage, we see Paul's great joy over this, not giving the glory to himself, but to God. It might appear as if Paul continues to em continued the emphasis on himself and his ministry as a way of claiming credit for the Corinthians' change of heart. But this is not the case. Rather, he rejoices in God's word that it has accomplished such wonderful results in them. The sole changer of hearts is the Holy Spirit, who brought about this godly grief in them and produced a repentance that led to salvation. It was God's work in them that transformed them. The faith in others or the rejection of faith is never a result of our own works, our own good or bad witness. Are we to share God's word and boldly witness in love? Of course. But it is God who changes the hearts and gives faith. God unites his people in the death and resurrection of Christ and works in our lives everything that he has intended to accomplish. Let us pray together. Lord of all, let your word work in my mind and heart, so that when I do wrong, I may humbly be led into godly grief that leads to your forgiveness. Amen. We pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. God's blessings on your day.